The deadlift is one of the most universal compound movements that there is. It can be used to promote a shit ton of different types of results. You can use the deadlift to increase your strength. You can use the deadlift to increase your conditioning. You can use the deadlift to increase your body composition by way of burning a lot of fat and building a lot of muscle. And as it relates to building muscle, a lot of people are unsure as to whether or not the deadlift is a better lower body exercise or a better back exercise. So one of the things we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna take a biomechanical analysis look at the deadlift so you have a better idea what the fuck's going on when you deadlift so you can make the best decision for yourself in terms of when you should do your deadlifts based on your goal. So we use the universal law of levers. There's two variables that you need to understand. There's a lever and a direction of resistance. If you can understand the relationship these two variables have on one another, you'll better understand the role that biomechanics plays in executing any exercise that you do. So to help reinforce the point, let's take a look at the lever activity continuum. On one end of the spectrum, we have neutral. On the other end of the spectrum, we have maximal activity. Now when the lever is parallel to the direction of resistance, the lever is in a neutral or inactive position. As it rotates and travels towards more of a perpendicular position in relation to the direction of resistance, it becomes more and more active. Therefore, the muscles that pull on that bone or that lever have to produce the most amount of force to overcome the resistance and bring that lever back to a more parallel position. So how does this relate to the deadlift? Let's take a look. We've got three diagrams on the board. We've got the top position of the deadlift. So no matter how you deadlift, this is what it's gonna look like when you lift the bar off the floor and you come to a standing position. Your torso will be stacked above your thigh, which will be stacked above your shin. All three levers will be parallel to the direction of resistance. Therefore, they are inactive in this position. Then we have the bottom position of a traditional deadlift and the bottom position of a Romanian deadlift. Now. This is not an exhaustive list in terms of how many different types of deadlifts there are. There's other types as well. There's a sumo deadlift, and the way you would perform that would be with your feet spread wider than a $2 Long Island whore, but that's not necessary to illustrate the point here. So let's take a look at the deadlift in the bottom position. The shin lever is parallel to the direction of resistance, and the quads act on this lever. Three of the four quad heads are exclusively responsible for extending the knee, but since the shin is parallel, that lever is inactive in this position. Therefore, the only work the quads need to do is to produce force to stabilize the knee so other muscles can do their job. We'll see the thigh lever is almost completely perpendicular to the direction of resistance. Therefore, it's the most active lever in this movement. And the torso lever is not parallel or perpendicular. Therefore, it's still somewhat active. And the muscles that act on these levers to extend the hip are the glutes and the hamstrings. This would indicate that this is a lower body movement. If we take a look at the Romanian deadlift in which there's a slight bend in the knee, the only difference here is that the thigh lever, which was parallel or perpendicular rather to the direction of resistance when performing a bent knee deadlift, is much closer to parallel now, but the torso is now much closer to perpendicular to the direction of resistance, therefore it is the most active lever. Now since the same muscles act on these levers, they're both lower body dominant movements. So regardless of how you look at it, the deadlift is a lower body movement based on biomechanics. This is not my opinion, this is fucking biomechanics. So anybody that tries to tell you that the deadlift is a back exercise obviously doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about and doesn't understand biomechanics. But while biomechanics does begin to tell the story, it does not tell the full story because if we were to end it here, you'd say, wow, biomechanics just served my candy ass and I now know that the deadlift is a lower body movement, but yet bodybuilders do deadlifts on back day and when I do deadlifts, my back really burns and it gives out. Why is that then? Here's the thing. Biomechanics will only point you in the right direction in terms of what muscles produce the force to do a repetition. They do not take into consideration that if you do more than one rep, other muscles can easily become limiting factors. So one of the things we got to take a look at here is that even in the top position, when these three levers are completely inactive, the lower back is still working to keep you upright, to keep you standing erect. So over time, if you do two reps or three reps or 10 reps or 10 sets of 10 and you do 100 reps, the lower back doesn't get the opportunity to rest like the glutes and hamstrings do. So even though the glutes and hamstrings are producing the force to do the movement, at the top of the lift, they have an opportunity to relax. At the bottom of the lift, they have an opportunity to relax as well because when you rest the bar on the ground, they don't have to do much work. So they have an opportunity to regenerate so that they can produce more force and overcome the resistance. But even if you rested the bar on the floor, the lower back doesn't have that same opportunity. It's still working. So 
the more reps you do, it's just going to compound the demand placed on the lower back and it can easily become a limiting factor. And so what started as a leg exercise can be used to exhaust the muscles of the lower back, but by no means is the deadlift a back exercise. The back is just hit with the collateral damage of performing high volumes of work. When someone says that the deadlift uh, isolates the lower back, that's like saying, you know, a straight arm pull down for the lats isolates the triceps, the long head of the triceps, because that muscle is also responsible for shoulder extension. And keeping your elbow straight to perform that movement can result in exhausting the long head of the triceps. And you might be sore in the triceps the next day if you did a high volume of straight arm pull downs. But did you do them for the triceps? Fuck no, it's a lat exercise. Let's take a look at a curl. If we look at a curl, the biceps attach to the radius. They pull on that lever, the forearm bone, or one of the two forearm bones. But what happens is if you perform enough reps, your grip could give out. You might not be able to hold the weight. So even though the arm curl is a bicep exercise, at the bottom position, what's happening is the forearm, the lever, is parallel to the direction of resistance. Therefore, the muscle acting on that lever is inactive unless you increase the demand artificially through your intent by squeezing your bicep. As you perform the movement at the top, if you hold the weight you know, at shoulder height, your forearm once again could be parallel to the direction of resistance, which would be going down when lifting a free weight. Therefore, the demand placed on the bicep is virtually none. But you don't let go of the weight and let the weight fall and hit you in the crook of your elbow and break your fucking arm. No, you keep holding the weight. And the demand is therefore constant on the forearms. So the forearms are going to get hit with collateral damage and they can become a limiting factor. So those are things that you need to take into consideration and those explain why when you perform exercises that are for one muscle group, another one could easily become the limiting factor. Now to answer another question real quick that some people might have, they might say, well, you know what? When I deadlift, I can lift more than when I Romanian deadlift. Why is that since the same muscles are involved? The muscle uh, capacity to produce force is greatest when a muscle is at or near its mid-range. When it's at its longest and shortest ranges, its capacity to produce force is reduced. So since the main muscle groups responsible for extending the hip and the deadlift are the glutes and the hamstrings, we got to take a look at these muscles and what's happening here. Now in the top position of the deadlift, since the hamstring crosses the hip joint and the knee joint, it's in a relatively mid-range in this position. As you descend into a deadlift, you're bending at the hip and at the knee. Now depending on the bend in the knee and the hip, the hamstrings are pretty much in an unchanged length position. Therefore, their capacity to produce force is still very, very great in this position. The difference, however, is in the Romanian deadlift, there's not much bending at the knee. So while we bend at the hip and we lengthen the hamstring at the hip, we don't shorten it at the knee. And therefore, it's in a much longer relative position and its capacity to produce force is lower. So. There's a biomechanical analysis of the deadlift. It's a lower body exercise. Anyone that tries to tell you otherwise does not understand biomechanics and doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Therefore, you might want to share this with them so that you can expand their base of knowledge so they don't go online somewhere and write something to make themselves look like a fucking idiot. You like this information yourself, click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel, support me, and I'll keep bringing you the best information you're going to find. It's really fucking simple. If you're watching this on a mobile device, you just go like this. You scroll down, and then you touch the screen, and you've subscribed. You've supported me. I'll keep bringing you better information you're going to find anywhere. Bar none, I can guarantee it.